health is complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. In other words, well-being is not merely you know, no longer being underwater, but it's actually rising above mere baseline into an overall state of flourishing and thriving, mentally, socially, and physically, of course, and for many people as well, spiritually. Uh, this program focuses on mental well-being. So what does mental well-being consist of? Uh, in the research on happiness, there are two basic notions about that. Uh, one is that there is an element uh, called hedonia, which is ordinary pleasure, uh, gratitude, sense of accomplishment, enjoyment of beauty, hanging out with friends, feeling good, feeling good about yourself, kind of the ordinary sense of the meaning of happiness, broadly defined. Then there is this other aspect of well-being, which is called eudaimonia, having to do with a sense of fulfillment or satisfaction or meaning in life. Um, a distinction between the two that comes to me from my own experience as a parent uh, many years ago with uh, little kids, uh, you might be getting up in the middle of the night to walk your crying and fussing baby. Uh, you know, it's not the happiest thing in the world in the sense of hedonia, but on the other hand, it's deeply fulfilling probably the most meaningful experience of your life. So that's the rough distinction between hedonia and eudaimonia. And both of these are aspects of the well-being that we are um, going after in this program. Another way of talking about that well-being is that it's the absence of suffering or the absence of drivenness or pressure, uh, stress, uh, craving, broadly defined. And instead, um, well-being means engaging life. We're not just sitting on a cushion or in a cave somewhere eating bonbons or the equivalent. We're engaged with life. We're dealing with real threats, real losses, real separations from other people. But we're doing so on the basis of an, increasing, an increasingly internalized felt sense of inner strength and happiness and love and wisdom and peace. That's the basis upon which we're dealing with things. So well-being doesn't just mean, you know, being tuned out from the world. It means being very engaged with the world, but on the basis of an underlying sense of fullness and ease and contentment and resilience and inner strength. Okay, so let's focus now on how to get that kind of well-being, uh, because to have that sort of well-being, we need to shape our life course in such a way that it increases well-being inside us. Well, how do you do it? How do you grow more of that well-being inside your own mind? That takes us to a fundamental model used in healthcare uh, and in uh, the social sciences broadly, which says that a person's course over a day or over their lifetime, including how much well-being they have, is based on three fundamental factors. The challenges that we face, the vulnerabilities that these challenges wear upon, and the resources we use to deal with them. For example, to use a kind of basic metaphor, imagine that you're washing your hands, or washing dishes rather, in a bunch of soapy, messy, dirty, germ-filled water. That's the challenge. And let's also suppose that you have a little cut on your hand. That's your vulnerability, through which these germs in the water can get to you. But let's say also that you put on a pair of rubber yellow gloves or something, which are the resource that protect your vulnerabilities and help you manage these challenges. Well, in the same way as we go through life, as our challenges rise or our vulnerabilities rise, so must our resources as well. And on the other hand, if a person doesn't have very many resources, uh, they need to lower their challenges and reduce their vulnerabilities. Otherwise, they're going to be overwhelmed by things. Well, working on all three of these challenges, vulnerabilities, and resources is important. But what's the one you can usually affect the most? Generally, where we have the most opportunity is in terms of growing resources. Because if you, as you've probably noticed, Challenges uh, tend to be pretty resistant to change, and our personal vulnerabilities tend to be pretty stable, pretty hard to um, change over time. So then, in terms of resources, right, where can we grow resources? Well, resources are found in three places, basically. Out there in the world, inside your own body, 
or inside your own mind. 